We're glad you're with us this evening. I'm Terry Brewer. Lynn Brooks has the evening off. We have new details in the case of a Tuscaloosa County woman charged with murder and the death of her ex-husband. The suspect will soon have a court hearing and court records also show the couple had a history of domestic violence. The details on all of that is in our top story at 5 o'clock. 30-year-old Tracy Grissom is charged with murder for the death of Hunter Grissom. As we first reported yesterday, investigators say she called them Tuesday morning and said she shot her ex-husband. It happened at Binion Creek Boat Landing on Highway 43 North. The sheriff's office says Tracy Grissom told authorities she pulled into the parking lot to take a picture for a pending civil case. Authorities say Tracy Grissom told them Hunter Grissom saw her and made an obscene gesture. Authorities say Tracy Grissom said she got out of her vehicle and fired until the gun was empty. Investigators say Grissom bonded out of jail yesterday. The Tuscaloosa Metro Homicide Unit says a preliminary hearing will happen in a few weeks. Then the case will go to a grand jury. Now, court documents show the couple filed for divorce in 2005, but dropped the charges two months later. Documents also show the couple eventually divorced in 2010. Law enforcement officials also tell us Tracy Grissom filed charges against Hunter Grissom for first degree sodomy, first degree rape and imprisonment in 2010. Well, of course, few details are known about the circumstances, circumstances surrounding the shooting, but the couple's court history does put a spotlight on the issue of domestic violence. Now, statistics show more than three women and one man are murdered by their intimate partners in the United States every day. The University of Alabama's Women's Resource Center says domestic violence is not restricted by race, social class, or gender. The center says statistics show a victim leaves their perpetrator five to seven times before leaving permanently, and the abuse may not end there. Perpetrators want control over their victims. So when they leave, the perpetrator thinks, well, I've lost control here. So they're going to do something to exert control. And what we do see many times, even with our students that are in abusive relationship, is that harassment and stalking type of situation escalates when they leave. Miller says if you know anyone, a man or a woman who is a victim of domestic violence, you can call, you should call the police no matter what the situation. There's also a link to Turning Point Services on our website, WVUATV.com. Well, WVUA is in Montgomery today where elected leaders are wrapping up the final day of the 2012 regular legislative session. Still on this final day, there is a lot of work to be done, including approval of the education and general budgets and Alabama's immigration law. WVUA's Daniel Sparkman is in Montgomery and he joins us live with the latest. Daniel. Now, Terry, one of the big topics of today, this the final day of the 2012 regular legislative session is, of course, the state's general fund and education trust fund budgets. Now, a conference committee is meeting right now made up of members of both houses, the Senate and the House of Representatives, trying to come up with some sort of deal on both budgets before tonight's midnight deadline, which is the official end to this year's legislative session. Now, the House Ways and Means Committee Chairman Jim Barton said the main difference is how to deal with a $184 million funding hole. In the House version of the shortage is in Medicaid and in the Senate it's in prison funding. Now legislators may actually let voters decide on how to fill that funding gap coming up in the November elections. Senator Bobby Singleton spoke with him earlier and he says that this slower process getting through the budget is actually going to help us come out with a better budget overall. We've been trying to do is look at numbers. We look at our actuaries around the state in terms of money that is coming in through taxes, uh, trying to find out where money would be in 13 in terms of our growth. So all of that kind of holds up uh, the budgets and to make sure that we're getting the best budget out that we possibly can. Uh, there have been a lot of amendments and other solutions being offered. And the more you go through it, the slower the process is, the more you can get more input on. So that's why the budgets are being held up at this point. Now, once the conference committee meeting is over, both houses will still have to vote on the resolution that came out of that meeting. But coming up tonight at 6, we have another big topic, which has been immigration all through the regular session. Some more decisions made today. Both houses took up a bill to clarify some of the language in the law. And we'll hear from both sides of that topic coming up tonight on WVUA News at 6. Reporting live at the Alabama State House in Montgomery, Daniel Sparkman, WVUA News.
All right, thank you for that report, Daniel. We will have much more live from Montgomery coming up on WVUA News at 6 and 10. Well, Tuscaloosa City School, uh, Tuscaloosa City officials have a vision for a new municipal complex in Alberta City. The catch is it will likely happen only if the city gets certain federal grants. Now, the city is seeking possibly up to $20 million in U.S. Department of Commerce grants. The grant money would then go to various city buildings, including a new fire station, fire administration building, and a potential library. City city Facilities Director Cliff Pennick still assures there will be at least two municipal buildings coming back to the area. The fire station will be built regardless. The East Precinct is being uh, renovated regardless. The other two buildings would be depending on if other funding could be uh, uh, attained. Mayor Maddox says if the city does receive the grants, you could see the project begin this time next year. On your education watch, schedule changes are ahead for students in the Tuscaloosa City Schools and job cuts will affect some teachers. First, the schedule changes. Earlier this month, the state legislature voted to extend summer for all schools across the state to help promote tourism. That has local school leaders making changes to school calendars. Tuesday night, the Tuscaloosa City Board agreed on one of several options that will allow schools to get in the required number of days before having to break for summer. The option will add eight minutes to each school day. No changes are planned for the spring break or Thanksgiving holidays. School spokesperson Leslie Bruinton also tells us the board has approved letting go of 30 contract personnel, including 25 teachers. On your Crime Watch, your piece of information could be the missing link investigators need to catch a suspect. Here's this week's Tuscaloosa County's Most Wanted. Hello, my name is Ted Sexton, the Sheriff of Tuscaloosa County. Thanks to you and WVUA, we have three captures in this week's Tuscaloosa County's Most Wanted. Arthur Turner was arrested on the charge of robbery in the second degree. Michael Eatman was arrested on the charge of attempted murder and other charges. Earl McVeigh was arrested on failure to comply with the Sex Offender Notification Act. Again, thanks to your help, that's 389 captures. Now we need your help this week in finding more of Tuscaloosa County's Most Wanted. Jeffrey L. Warren is wanted on the charge of attempted murder. He's a black male, 24 years of age, six foot tall, 180 pounds, with black hair and brown eyes, last known to be living in the 500 block of 38th place in Tuscaloosa. Michael J. Milks is wanted on violation of the Sex Offender Notification Act. He's a white male, 33 years of age, five foot nine, 130 pounds, with brown hair and brown eyes, last known to be living on Old Fayette Road in Barrie, Alabama. If you have any information on these as well as others wanted by the Tuscaloosa County Sheriff's Office, please call us at 205-464-8672 or go to our website at www.tcsoal.org. You can like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. And working together, we'll continue to make Tuscaloosa County a safer place to live. It's estimated 1.2 million Americans are living with HIV and many are unaware they have the disease. but you soon may be able to test yourself for HIV in the privacy of your own home. A Food and Drug Administration Advisory Committee has approved the OraQuick in-home HIV test. Researchers say the test should be made available over the counter, saying the test is safe and effective. If approved by the FDA, this would be the first over-the-counter test marketed for HIV or any infectious disease.